Welcome back guys to another episode of the D2 Talks. On this channel we bring you interviews with the best artists from the community. So if you're new here please do consider subscribing. This week I have the pleasure to introduce you to the work of a friend of mine, French architect and visualizer Thomas Dubois. I've had the pleasure to meet Thomas, I think in 2014 for the very first time. He's a very talented architect that uses architecture visualization as a way to experiment and research in the field of the visual arts. The thing that strikes me all the time about Thomas is the way he is as a person. He's very shy, very reserved, but at the same time extremely talented. As always, enough of me blah blah blah, enjoy this beautiful talk. Two, one, and we're live. Cool. We're not, we're not live, like we're recording this, so don't sure. worry. It's <laughs> You, I, I know I'm French, but you know, I'm not so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that every time that we invite you for some lecture or some workshop, the first thing you say is, hello, I'm French. <laughs> yeah, sure, because my, I think every, everybody can hear it. My accent is very, very French. And um, in the events, in the detour, or in the workshop, uh, most of the people's speak English very, very well. And I'm not so good in English, so the first thing I say most of the time is, you know, I'm French, I'm sorry, I'm gonna make mistakes, but you know, it's a French thing. It's My a English is very French. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so nice to see you. So, so yeah, nice to see you. It's, me too. Uh, it's always a pleasure, and you know that, because it's, uh, it's a lot of fun always hanging out together, and... Uh, we need to wait. It's a, long, it's a long story between you and me. Yeah, it is actually. It is actually. I mean, you know, maybe I'm one-sided, but uh, I like to think that uh, your talent, I, I've seen it since day one. And <laughs> when I yeah. when I saw you when I when I saw your work, I said, this guy is a great artist. Is a fantastic uh, visionary. And when I told you, you did not believe me. Yeah, sure. And I still don't believe you, actually. <laughs> yeah. Toma, I, listen, I didn't even introduce you. I'm here with the, the one and only, your name is Thomas Dubois. But yes. uh, in, in English, people call you Thomas De yeah. Dubois. That's it. <laughs> and you are an architect. That yeah. is also an artist. Yeah, you can. Yeah, we can say that. Sure. You sure. you do some renderings, like uh, you know, for clients. But this is not yeah, your sure. main focus, right? I'm. I would say nowadays I am like fifty fifty. Okay. In architecture and in, um, I would say yeah, renderings or or concept thing. I start to do. So uh, yeah, it's getting more and more important in my in my professional life. Of course, in my personal life, life sorry, it uh, I've always been there for sure. Uh, as I was saying, I think as far as I can remember, uh, since I'm a little kid, I always draw, uh, creating stories, writing stuff. I was uh, really. Um, impressed by some movies, some books, maybe some video games, some animation. So it um, always have been there with me, I think, this creative thing. It, ju it just take um, a different shape uh, with time, of course. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm an architect. First of all, I'm an architect. Yeah, I like, I like the, fa the fact that um, I'm an architect. It's, uh, yeah, um, you know, at a, at a period uh, after the D2, the first uh -huh. D2 I did with you, I had this kind of period where I could have been a total um, archivist uh, guy. And I decided to not be. Because I, I think I still want to be in the design process of architecture. Okay. I mean, for now, uh, I have 
I guess, a, spe a special relation with architecture. Um, it's, uh, I often say, it's a joke, but I often say that it's, um, it's like a, a love relation with a girl, but I have the same with architecture, you know, yes. uh, with uh, ups and downs. And uh, nowadays, it's a cool relation, but I start to feel that it's going to be, <laughs> there will be a break at the moment. <laughs> I know that in the future. But uh, yeah, I, I like the fact that being in the process of doing architecture is really interesting because you have to deal with a lot of constraints from different types. It can be economic, it can be cultural, it can be some laws etc etc and the design and you have to manage everything to make the project that can be the better project for this place so yeah i like that i like that and i think the to me this process of doing architecture doing design can be applied in a different type of creative industry i mean maybe in movies maybe in you don't know, for a creative project, you can apply the same process. I mean, of course, the software, the techniques will be different, but I think the process of creating a project with a different constraint will be the same, more or less, of course. Dude, I remember when you were in Vienna, you said something about doing graffiti, right? Yeah, sure. I, I see Montana cans behind you. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, they're they're familiar. Them. Because actually, this is yeah. how I started also to make uh, art, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I still, uh, I'm very curious and I still love a lot of graffiti artists that I follow. Uh, yeah, it's something, yeah, I love graffiti. I think sometimes graffiti are really like the uh, easiest and fastest uh, way to... to to represent society also a little bit, you know, to, to represent, uh, rather not represent, but like read society. Like for instance, you know, in in, uh, in Vienna, where I used to live before, there were a lot of uh, graffitis that had to do with uh, issues linked to say, feminism or politics. Um, here, for instance, in Tel Aviv, I see a lot of graffitis that deal with uh, you know, the, the political conflict between Palestine and Israel. Sure. Uh, so, you know, there, uh, artists really work to yeah. communicate a message. Yeah, you know, sure. we were talking before about telling yeah. a story or something. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's um, uh, a good tool to, to take the temperature of a city, of a country, of a society. Yeah, I think, yeah, sure. Because it's very brutal sometimes. But, uh, you know, these senti sensitive and brutal things in the same expression. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. when did you start to make the switch between, uh, like, you know, uh, architecture and normal art? Like, uh, did you start studying straight away after school architecture? Or did you take some time off to, to think or to... Yeah, but exactly. It's exactly like that. I Actually, I started... Directly after school, uh -huh. um, and uh, I started architecture for I guess three four months. I had good results, but I wanted to do something else. I think I wanted to be free to start working and start to live the real life, you know, and gig out and etc. So I stopped my studies for about two uh, two years two years and a half. Okay. And I came back to architecture saying, okay, architecture, I'm sorry, I came back, <laughs> promise, I'm going to stay this we time. We can make it work. Yeah, sure, this time. And uh, yeah, and during my studies, I always had some kind of breaks where I wanted to explore different things. And the cool thing with architecture, especially with the, when you study, when you study, sorry, architecture, is that you can, at least in Montpellier, that was that, you can explore different way of expression. I mean, I, I did a lot of, for example, analog photography okay. during my studies, a lot of video things. And at the moment, 
I was introduced to Cinema 40, and that's where I think my expression of now started. Okay, this is uh, this is freaking amazing. Well, it's um, you know to be to be honest, at the beginning when I um, I started uh, the study in architecture, I did most of my works with hand drawings on paper, okay. you know, like classic drawings. And I saw m some of my friends doing on computer and I was like, you know, 3D is cheating, yeah. you know. And uh, little by little, I start to understand that it's, um, it can be also a very powerful tool to express, to express ideas and to express stories. So yes. yes. T tell me another thing, uh, just because, you know, very often people, I see it, you know, I, I hear it when we do workshops and so on. Uh, very often one thing that I hear is, where do you find your inspiration from? Now, before you answer that, I'm going to ask you also one more question, because probably these are, you know, connected. You sure. have a very strong relationship with uh, Japan. Sure. Yeah, totally. So tell me a little bit about uh, both, you know, like where do you find your inspiration and what is your relationship with Japan? I think I found inspiration in every day. We, as I said, every day we see a lot of images on the web of different types. I'm very curious. And uh, yeah, I think I found inspiration in everyday life. And of course, in this uh, emotion I can have watching a movie or seeing, uh, going to um, a painting exhibition or a photo exhibition or stuff like that, for sure. So yeah, I have not um, a particular way to find inspiration. I think it's something very organic that um, there is a moment it's like, um, I guess it's like a, a muse that appears at the moment. Yeah. And when she's there, you have to express. And when she's not there, you let it go and you, she will come back at another moment. <laughs> I think, I hope. And uh, yeah, I think uh, it's very organic to me, you know. And uh, with Japan, uh, yeah, I've been several times in Japan. I have family in Japan. I love Japan. That was um, the first time I, I was there. I was really shocked or impressed, I would say, by Japan. Of course, there are bad things in Japan. Not everything is is um, lovely and uh, everything is beautiful, that's for sure. But there are some things in Japan that are um, a bit complex to understand when you are not Japanese. Uh -huh. But yeah, it's a beautiful country, really powerful in this, in the aesthetic way. Really, really powerful. And even in cultural way, it's really interesting. Different approach from where I'm from. No, I agree 100%. Actually, with my wife, we always say to each other, we need to go and live in Japan. We need to yes, go sure. and live in Japan, at least for a couple of years. And hopefully, we don't know. It yeah. might happen, you know. It's, yeah, uh, sure. We never know. In life, we never know. My no, girlfriend no. is maybe less optimistic about living in Japan, you know. But uh, who knows? Maybe I will convince her. I don't know. If you find a job or if you, you know, build yeah. your own company. Yeah, exactly. It depends on the opportunity you can have in life. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, sure. Now... Uh, we have said that, you know, um, architectural vis visualizations are at the moment growing and you're doing 50 and 50 with architecture. Uh, yeah. y you are collaborating with some other artists that, yeah. uh, that are relatively famous. Uh, is there anything that you can share that you can tell us? Uh, not yet. Okay. Not, not yet. I have some things. Uh, I'm, I, and the cool thing is that I start to, I'm starting little by little to work in different 
field that uh, than architecture. I'm working actually now on uh, on a movie. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. This is incredible. And, yeah, yeah, that's cool, and um, also different things. And uh, yeah, and uh, the cool thing with the, I guess it's because of the event of the D2, I would say. Really? I Was it really that important? I, I guess going to events, uh, you have the opportunity to meet people, to meet people you, you, you really love the work, and sometimes a good connection happens and it can create projects and opportunities in the future. And uh, yes, um, I... I'm really happy like, to hear that. I'm really yeah. happy to hear that, you know, because now I feel a little less guilty when people tell me that, you know, the ticket costs too much money. Yeah, but there is a, a lot of conference, there is a lot of talks, um, and a lot of good moments in this um, event. So, yeah, I think it's worth the price, for sure, for sure. And, uh, yes, at the last D2, I uh, met uh, Karim Musa. And Which, by the way, I have interviewed this morning. Oh, okay. I just had him on, on chat, so yeah, cool. Um, yeah, we met uh, each other, and uh, I think we're going to... I know we're going to collaborate in the future on different things, but I can't tell no more yet. You know, one of the things that I that I'm now looking for, but I cannot find, and I asked uh, uh, Christian to see where um, they might be. When you did the first workshop in Vienna, you left your notes. Okay. And those notes had beautiful little drawings and they had beautiful writing because a lot of stuff that was written, it wasn't normally written, it was written in a beautiful calligraphy with like, you use different pens, different, uh, you know, colors. Uh, I don't remember, maybe. Yeah, but it was just, and then I asked you and I said, listen, what is this stuff? And you say, oh, it's only my notes. And I was like, do you always make all these drawings? And then you show me a book that you had where you made all these little drawings and you had like very small thumbnails of little paintings and little drawings that you were doing which were absolutely amazing. Thank you. Um, yes, it's, um, as I said, it's um, something I've always done, drawings. I remember um, when I was a kid, my parents uh, um, went to uh, go to the restaurant with us, with my brother and me, and they put uh, us in the corner of the table with some colored pencil and we used to, to draw and napkins and stuff like that. I remember that. So yeah, it's very natural for me to, to draw and to also, as you, you, you were saying before, remember things with drawings, you know. Another thing that I remember is when, uh, when you came to the conference, I had to give you my uh, Wacom tablet. And yeah. I remember your Wacom tablet was like all like with lines. Yeah, sure. Like really, really used yeah. and mine was brand new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's still very, very used. I have the same. I think I have to change soon, but uh, yeah, it's a very, very, very old one. Maybe you should switch to a, a monitor like, you know, Cintiq. Cintiq. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. I, yeah, I'm thinking, but um, yeah, I'm thinking on it and changing maybe my computer or so and stuff like that, yeah. And you are, okay, another reason why in the very beginning I got in touch with you is because uh, you are a Cinema 4D and V-Ray user. Yeah. And that was basically a very big deal for me because at that time I was trying to learn Cinema 4D and then I was looking at your, uh, at the stuff that you were doing and I was really impressed, you know, and a lot of people in the community were saying, no, Cinema 4D cannot do the things that uh, 3ds Max can, or it cannot do uh, certain things. And then I was looking at your work and I was like, no, you know. Yeah, 
Yeah, you, you, I, I think Cinema 4D is a very powerful tool. I think I also love the... It's very intuitive. You can try, you can explore very quickly things. Uh, and of course, I use a lot of I use a lot of Photoshop also. Yeah. Depending that's on the project, actually. Depending that's on another. The that's another thing that I wanted to 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 talk to you about. Is uh, you're still very much on a on a workflow where the, your rendering is pretty like basic, unless you're doing like interior pictures, and then you do a lot of uh, matte painting, right? Yeah, that's right. And um, actually, it depends on the project. Sometimes uh, I want to challenge myself in maybe in the fetishist way. So I try to do a lot of things in 3D. Uh, I did some projects with a lot, a lot of 3D. Uh, but yeah, it depends on what I do, depending on what I do. It's uh, <clears throat> now to me. It's really like um, impressive, you know. Now that we have made basically almost everybody the switch to a very complete three D workflow, uh, I still get blown away by people that are so good at making pictures by using compositing techniques, you know, like matte painting and yeah, so sure, on. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, have you studied matte painting with somebody? Like, did you do any course or did you? Uh, yeah, I did a course uh, with um, Anthony F. Tekari. I don't know if the... the I think pro- it's, uh, what is it called? Uh, the it's master C- class. C- yeah, it's, it's some sort of master class for, with CGMA. Yeah. It's a really cool, cool master class. Is really talented matte painter at, uh, I think he works at uh, Blizzard. A lot of guys in the industry um, made this course before me and they said to me, okay, Thomas, you, you should try this. You, you're going to be interested in this. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that was very interesting. But I did it um, after the workshop we made together. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, but you know, it, it's, I, you know, I think it's actually very good that you did that because it really shows that you are interested in learning yourself, you know? Oh, yeah. You you know, I have, um, I, I would not say a bad opinion, but I have a very uh, um, strict opinion about my own work. Okay. I think it could be improved uh, a lot. Uh, I have not all the skill I would like to have to express the, and do the project I would like to do. So I, I have so much to learn. And especially in these days, you know, there are a lot of new software, a lot of new techniques that appear. So you can learn all the time. And that's the beautiful thing with art today. There, are, I heard sometimes that um, people um, say that um, there are not better period than today to do art. Because you can do art in millions of different ways. So yeah, I uh, I think I uh, I'm thinking on learning new software soon. So again, maybe what, what, what are you interested in learning? Maybe I will. I'm thinking of um, switching to another render engine. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, there is this um, Octane thing. Everybody talks about Octane. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it seems to be very, very powerful. But I'm not sure. There is also Corona. Uh, I would like to give it a try, but there is no version for Cinema 4D and Mac today. Ah, okay. So I can't. But um, yeah, there is this uh, Houdini thing also, mm-hmm. which can be interesting for simulation and stuff. So yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of things, you know, to be honest with you, I started the course myself now. I'm studying under uh, an art director and yeah. I'm learning a lot of new things, um, which also have to do with uh, a technical, as- technical aspects of the, uh, the job. Uh, a lot has to do also with like 3D tools, different 3D tools. We're trying to change a little bit the workflow. I think the key point is 
never be afraid to learn something new. It doesn't matter yes. if it's, you know... Uh, totally. I, I think that knowledge is always, like, uh, underrated, you know? Uh, a exactly. lot of people, especially in university, when I was a teacher, and every semester I would try to teach something new, my students would tell me, why do you teach us another software? And I was thinking between me and myself, why not? You know, you should learn, you have a fresh mind, you should learn like a hundred things. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I don't know. I think that uh, there, is a, there is a very big chunk of people that uh, want to have the click one button solution. And then yeah. there are, you know, the, the real like uh, people that want to know inside out how certain things work just because they want to have 100% control over the, the, the full yeah, sure. product that they make, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we always have to remember remember that I think the, the, the software is a tool and it will stay a tool. So um, the most part of the process, I think, is in your mind and the way you approach it. But if you want to, to achieve a certain level of things, you have to master the tool, of course, and to be, yeah, the master of the tool. To I'm, be sure. really, I'm really enjoying this talk because I consider you almost like a, an artisan, you know? You are on your own, you make beautiful art, you make like, a, you know, you, you don't only do renderings, you also do like a, a lot of painting, you create little stories. Yeah, sure. These stories are incredible. Like, uh, you know, I I used one of your stories for one of my videos on YouTube, uh, which, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, it just makes me feel that uh, in a way, when we talk about creative freedom, you are really 100% free. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. That's why, uh, to me, um patient project, personal project are really important because that's where I am free in a way and that's where I can uh, express the things I have to say, if I have to say something, of course. And also that's where I learn the most because uh, I challenge myself a lot on each new project. Uh, I try to achieve um, a better result at the end, which is uh, well, I will never be happy with, of course. But um, it's normal. Yeah, yeah. Personal project, passion project are really important for that. I think I always, I've always done personal project. Uh, but the only thing is, when I was younger, I didn't know that you can call it personal project. For me, it was just uh, life, you know. Yeah. Hobby yeah. <laughs> so in life. And uh, yeah, today it's getting more and more important. I think I, yeah, that's a big part of my life, for sure. How long does it take for you to finish a project like uh, uh, like Fallen? Oh, Fallen is really short because it's only, I guess, four or five images, or maybe a little more, but uh, it's like, I have I don't know, maybe two weeks. Maybe like, some... uh, everything is painted by hand. You don't use yeah. 3D software, right? Yeah, on this one, um, no. Yeah, I use some photo bashing, some stuff, etc., etc., some Photoshop techniques, but there is no 3D in this one. And uh, yeah, it depends. Some projects are really longer to do. Actually, I'm working now on a new personal project, which is really big and it's gonna be very long it's gonna be very okay. long and you cannot share anything about this project i started to share some things on the ah, internet yeah. ah, okay okay yes i think i remember which one it is hold on let me see on your facebook maybe i find it wow. yeah it's uh, uh, what, uh, what is it called chateau noir yes yes it's the one in the forest yeah it's yeah, for now it's in the forest. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There yeah. it is. I mean, hold on. I'm just gonna play it. Oh, there is a video. Yeah, there is a video. There are. There is unfortunately no no music, but the graphics are fantastic here. Oh, there is a music actually. No, I know, but I cannot uh, play okay. it uh, for for the for the you know for the people watching this. Yeah, so sure. maybe they can just go and uh, and see you. Uh, yeah, Because sure. your YouTube is here. Hold on, I, I'm going to put it into the screen so people see it. There you go. Thomas Dubois. <laughs> yeah, no, this is fantastic. And I, I love it, you know. And I also like the way you create these little teasers so that people are like, oh, we cannot wait until, you know, you, uh, yeah. you, uh, you show it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's thank you, thank you. First of all, thank you. And uh, I just, yeah, I just liked the video because I realized that I didn't like it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I wanted to create something different from what I see almost every day on the web. I wanted to create very something very different. Okay. So it's gonna be different for sure. But uh, you know, we have to take some risks sometimes and to do what you love, first of all. And yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, uh, if people uh, like it, that's cool. If they don't like it, well, I have, um, I don't care. I don't care. But I, it, I, it, I just enjoy not, doing it, for sure. It's, uh, I tell you what, it's not that you don't care, it's just that you understand that this is for yourself, you know? Yeah, it's not that I don't care, of course, but it's, I enjoy doing this. That's the no, most. No, but I understand you a hundred percent. You know, and I, I think that this is a, uh, this is the reason why personally I respect you so much as a, as an artist. You know. Mm. Because I, I always told you. I said, stop doing architecture. Just do visualizations. And always the response from your side was, well, you know, this is for me. It's not for the job, it's not for uh, anything else. This is, I do it for myself. Yeah, sure. It's, as I said, it's uh, started to be more and more a job now. But the, the, the sure thing is I will keep space and time to do this personal project, for sure. For sure. And I, and I cannot wait for you to publish more so that, you know, we can all wash our eyes with your talent. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's too much. It's too much. Thomas, listen, we usually what we do is 30 minutes recording. We already yeah. have done 34. Okay. So I guess this is everything for now. Yeah, sure. Uh, all I'm going to do now is just stop the recording. I want to thank you very much for doing this. You can say goodbye to people if there is something else that you want to say. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to stop the recording and then I'm going to say goodbye to you in person, okay? Okay, sure. No problem. Dude, thank, thank you very you. much for doing this. And yeah. I will see you in Vienna. Yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Fabio, for uh, this uh, little invitation. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. We should and do that more often. Yeah, sure. When you want. <laughs> when you want. Sure. Dude, thanks a lot for doing this. I'm gonna stop the recording. I will Thank talk you. to you in a minute. Sure. Hold on.